still there. I ain't been able to mm -hmm. sell it yet. But we do have another new box in. Uh, that's going to be the, I just got it in yesterday, uh, Thunderstorm Gray in the 2S. So if you'll remember, in the, the 4S, we don't have those trim options just yet for the, right. but they say they're upgrading these, but I think that Thunderstorm Gray with that black handle option there, that uh, actual thicker further back, it looks really good. Yep. But. It's a good looking box. Yeah, I'm, like I said, I just got it in yesterday. I don't expect it to last very long. I mean, I may have just jinxed myself there, but <laughs> I uh, it. if I did, I do. Which, of course, we got to trade it in, snap on real cart. Uh, it's always fun when we got snap on stuff traded in. Uh, yeah. Because everybody just, it blows their mind that there's snap on on the truck. You know? <laughs> You'll hear that comment that, oh, I thought I got on the Mako truck a hundred times, but that's okay. Uh, I'm sure they deal with the same thing when they take Mako stuff in on trade, so. Well, I but, did a um, <clears throat> Toyota Tundra yesterday, a U joint on it. And the guy brought it in, he's like, man, I did the front one. God, it's a pain to get these things out, blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, bring it in. And it was the very back one, you know. So I just took one of the, uh, I just took it loose and I didn't take the drive shaft out of the truck. I just dropped it down on, a, you know, one of those screw jacks, yeah. you know. Well, that's good because them things are heavy too. And I took and used that new Matco socket press. I don't know if you got one on the truck to show, but. I'm going to look to see. I used that and dude, the guy was like, like he was standing there while I was doing it, and he was like, "Man, it was like maybe, maybe ten minutes, you know." I've seen a lot of creative ways to do it. I've I've seen people do it in like uh, actual bench presses and or uh, yeah, the 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 presses. I've seen them do it with hammer and socket, which mm -hmm. I've done many a times. Uh, I've seen it several different ways. I haven't ever did it with one of those. So. Well, I took on, I think it was a 19 Matco impact socket. Yeah. Fit perfectly in that cap. And then the other side, I used a larger side, like a, I think it was like a 35 or 36, something like that. Whatever the bigger half inch right. drive uh, shallow sockets I had was. Man, it just popped that thing right out like it was butter you know and that guy's like man he said that just goes to show you right there having the right tools is that's right what makes a difference but it was definitely easy he was he was shocked at how quick it went because he was talking about it took him like two hours the first time trying to beat on that thing and well and you never know when you when you start beating on it like that and everything else you have to be careful because you can bend those ears mm -hmm. um it doesn't happen very often but when it does it, it causes problems but uh, i've seen people do the same thing by using the press the, the press in the shop and you know it's always it's well, always if, somebody else's fault until you realize that you, you did it right but, well if that tool made it that easy on a toyota Man, I can just imagine a Ford or a you know a Chevy or something that's, that's pretty really easy, easy to start with. You know how how quick it would be. I don't believe I have one on on here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and try to find a part number for it and order it. Um, I can show mine in there. Uh, yeah. To cut in the video, and that way people can see what it looks like. All right, guys. So here's the kit I was telling you about. It's a socket C-frame press. The part number is a S. CFP1, you can see what it looks like here. It's rated for 11 tons, so you can put out on that thing. Obviously, it's not for use for ball joints, as you can see here. But this thing works amazingly well, especially for um, doing U-joints. So if you guys do some U-joints, this will save you some time and some trouble. Here's what the kit looks like. It comes in a plastic tray. This is the press itself. You can see I've got the half inch adapters in here, but they just push in. Uh, there's a hole up here you can press and then it'll help you get it back out. But the, uh, it's kind of got like an O-ring on there that kind of snaps itself into the, like the threaded rod here. Um, you see how it rolls up. 
but that just snaps in there and you put any size socket you want to fit in any situation. These things are really great. Uh, here's the flat pieces that I talked about in the video that you could use too if you don't need a socket on it in case you wanna press something completely flat. Really good kit, so you guys be sure to check this out because it is well worth the money. And normally I get all the new stuff sent to me, so I don't know why, I don't know if I just missed it or, or what I did, but uh, I wanna go ahead and get one. I almost wanna try one just to, uh, Dude, they're awesome. They're like a, I mean, you know, sort of like a ball joint press, but yeah. the way that you can, you know, it's got the adapter for the three eighths and the half inch. Yeah, uh, I, I remember seeing it. it. I remember seeing something about it, but I think I have, uh, I have a bearing bearing press, but I don't have the socket one. Um, but anything to make them easier, especially mm -hmm. U joints. I had one guy that I worked with; he refused to do them. But that's because every single one he did got messed up. Uh, it didn't matter if he if he bent the ear on the drive shaft or if the pins fell out of the cap. It didn't really matter. Something well, what I did happen. on this one, because um, you know Toyota's a little different animal. I put the U joint in with the caps off. Yeah. And I knew, like, if you tap them, obviously they're gonna the, the right. needle bearings will fall out. So what I did was put the cap in, put the press on it, and press one of the caps about halfway in. Yeah. And then you know, I slid the U-joint back in there, and of course it went right up in that one, and then there was enough meat yeah. on the center part to grab the cap on the other side. Man, it, like, it literally took me longer to take the drive shaft loose from the rear end than it did to change that U-joint. <laughs> <laughs> it was really smooth. I've seen some creative ways, but, and I used to have a guy tell me uh, to take a little bit of, um, he had some type of grease that he would put on there just to help hold the needle bearings in a little better. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some of the aftermarket uh, versions, the needles would come out so easy. Yeah. Uh, and I had a guy that, that was good enough to put them back in there. I was never good enough to try to get them all back in there because my patients just wouldn't do it. Just order me another one. They're mm -hmm. usually, the aftermarkets are usually 15, 20 bucks. Or was then, They're, they may be 60 now, but, um, and then like I said, I had the other guy that, you know, it, we didn't we didn't ask him to, because we knew that we was gonna be doing it over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I do have the new digital, uh, or the, the digital camo and the 3 8 impact. Uh, it is, it was limited edition, so I was only able to get two at the time. Right. Um, but for the ones that uh, had bought the digital half inch when it come out, this one come out, we ordered it a long time ago. Uh, I believe we ordered it, it was either before Expo or at Expo when we ordered that. Wow. Um, we finally got them in. We have that, the digital camo half inch and the air hammer. So. I have a couple of people who really like the air hammer that went ahead and bought them while I could get them. So I'm sure uh, those two ain't gonna last long if your dealer don't have them. That probably because he didn't um, make it in time or maybe they ran out before he did it. Like I said, it was limited edition, so I don't know how right. many they had, but uh, there's the bearing cup installer that I have, but I, I yeah, I, it sounds it like the one. similar to that, but like it's got the interchangeable. Yeah. Like, it's a little round thing with a, Kind of an O-ring on it. It's got yeah. a three-eighths anvil or half-inch anvil yeah. on each side. Yeah, I remember seeing a picture of it, and I think I like that better. This one, this one says it has assistance with a magnet up there, but I don't, I don't see it working as well as what a socket mm -hmm. would, because that socket's actually going to give you the capability uh, to push it up in the ear. To push it up in the yeah. ear there, because you know um, it's got those clips, you know, and yeah. Man, it is, man, it's perfect. Like well, they, they designed that. I don't know if that's what they made it for, but it is, but they should rebrand it as a, uh, a, a U-joint remover and installer. I had a guy tell me one time, it don't matter, it don't matter if it's made for it, as long as it works. That's which it. On, in this case, it worked, but it didn't fix the problem. But uh, he, my caliper had seized, and this is when I was back in high school, but it had seized and uh, I took it to him and he was gonna show me how to do it. Well, he took, basically uh, uh, one of these here, but just a regular clamp style. Mm -hmm. And he just took his impact and ran it and it pushed the cylinder back in. But by the time I got home, it was smoking. It was, it was 
should have been replaced to begin with, but right. instead of replacing it, he had a fix for it. That's where he told me that apparently that didn't work out for him, but <laughs> or for me. But I like that, but like because like we said, when you start using these here, this ain't gonna fit inside that collar, yeah. or however you want to call it. Um, so what happens is I, I've said it a couple times about bending the ears. This is where you do that if you're not careful, because when you start pulling on that ear and pushing yeah. on that cap. In theory, that cap should go on before mm -hmm. that ear bends. But if if what if you get this cocked off to the side and it's grabbing a little bit of that ear? Now yep. you're pulling ear on ear. So um, these work and have worked for years. But it sounds like we've got something better now. So I'll definitely get it on the truck and. Yeah, I used that with that half inch stubby Matco Air Impact, and it was just. I mean, honestly, dude, I wish I'd have recorded it because <sighs> you know I've always heard people talk about how aggravating the Toyota. You don't want to swear. And yeah. I, was like, I don't. I don't see what's. There's a lot of stuff so that bad. they say on Toyotas is aggravating. That I guess just after working on them, they're not really aggravating. But I hate working on Fords, and yeah. my Ford techs are like, ah, oh, it's nothing to it. And it's like, man, that sucks. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll get one of those in. I'd rather work on a Ford than any other brand. But uh, I'm a little different. I think it's just whatever, whatever you like, whatever yep. you kind of learn tips and tricks on, you know. Yep. Still got sales going on the ratchets, the black ratchets. Um, they're what is that, a 24 inch? Yeah, I believe so. Yep, 24. Well, no, that, that would, uh, yeah, 24. My mass off this morning in my head. This set right here has got a lot of popularity this week, too, for driving in and, and uh, they really like the length of the longest one. Yeah. I think the most popular one, though, is this one right here. Mm -hmm. It has the three different sizes. That one's kind of hid. So he was going to buy just this one, but he really needed this one as well, which I have some of them up there. Um, but when he saw that they were in a kit, he really wanted it. He said he was having trouble finding a kit. So uh, when, he, when he saw that he got these, plus he got these here, he really liked it, which he's, he works in maintenance. At a, at a furniture factory so he'll be happy to have those next week yeah. but which i mean it seems like everything you work on you, you use the tool different but it does the same mm -hmm. same theory right so that's been a really top popular tool this week has it got a part number on it yeah that's i'm gonna roll it up right there so that's there cool that's a nice full set yeah, it's uh, I rolled that up. And can't even show it if I do that. Uh, this is showing everybody how it rolls. Yeah, up. it just rolls up, and you, yeah, that's more work. But no, um, between between this set, the extractor sockets, um, the the camo impacts, everybody's really liking those right now. A lot of popularity. Um, the the quick flow brake bleeders. We showed mm -hmm. those a couple of videos back. Um, though we got those on sale. I ordered more this time and I've only got two left, so they're going good. But, um, cool. I've got some other stuff ordered to show, which now I'm gonna order that. But, um, it's, it's all about the tool making the job easier, right? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think if you'll, you'll have one of them laid out and show people, yeah, you'll, you'll sell it. Like, you may have to actually stick, stick a socket on there and that way they yeah. kind of see how it works, but. Well, and I can... Dude, it's awesome. When you start thinking about it, when you're able to change the actual size of the press point, mm -hmm. there's probably a lot <clears throat> more applications oh, yeah. that you can use other than just U-joints, which, whether it be bushings or whatever it might be, I'm sure you're going to be able to use it for a lot of other different stuff, which the most hated things sometimes is U-joints and bushings mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Cause I'm gonna tell you, man, that thing, it's nice. Like when I was using it, I was thinking in my head like, cause you know, it's got those flat, um, it's like flat ones yeah. that you can put in there. And it would, like it would replace the bearing cup installer. Like, yeah. There's a lot of stuff you could do with that tool. Yeah. Like, it's really good. It's Honestly, kinda... you could use that tool to push calipers back in. Yeah. You know, if you didn't want to mess with a. Yeah. 
Well, you as know, long as you pay attention to the the uh, amount of force that it's taking, mm -hmm. uh, if it's taking an ungodly amount of force, there's usually something wrong. But yeah, I mean, if you don't want to use the ratcheting style or you don't want to use the pump style or some people are still using the clamps that they're actually having to turn, uh, if you wanted to use one of those, you could probably do it real quick. Um, mm -hmm. Just, you know, you'd have to be careful because you don't want the boot and everything. That's, that's a sore subject to a lot of people too because uh, that dust boot around it, a lot of people don't think it really matters. Yeah. Um, I, for one, think it does matter. Mm, I've been in too. several disagreements about that when I worked at a dealership. I think it definitely does. Anything to keep a little, even if it keeps a half the dirt out. Well, and, and, half it ain't having to eat, you know. We, I, again, I know I tell a bunch of stories about people I work with, but I used to have a guy that he seemed to never have problems with. And I always, especially on some of the tundras and stuff like that, having to take and put that boot back around because when you press it in, it mm -hmm. would push part of it out and then it seemed like you would walk it around three times before it would fall into place. So one day I go over to see what his quick idea was. Well, his quick idea was to take a pocket screwdriver and just put a hole in it and then it pushes right in. And I was like, no, you, you can't do that. That don't work. So <laughs> we went round and round about why that didn't work. You know, because obviously it's in there. It yeah. works, right? No, that's... <laughs> Oh, that's that's not important. He didn't understand that you know you got a moving object, so that has to slide. You get start getting dirt in there and stuff like that. It don't move, but that's I don't I don't know. It's uh, something else. But <laughs> <laughs> the stories the stories that mechanics can tell is something Absolutely. else. What you've seen. I mean, I think y'all seen zip ties holding calipers on, and mm -hmm. I've seen calipers upside down and then wondering why they don't work and everything yeah. like that. And, and trying to explain that to some people is like being We've had the on. same thing in here, you know, and it was upside down and like, you're gonna have to have a, I'll just put that caliper on there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've seen brake pads backwards. Oh yeah. Oh, it's making noise. So I did a TikTok on that. We had a guy come here. I just put these brake pads on. I've done something wrong. It's making a heck of a racket. Got it in there and they had the pads on backwards. I'm like, there you go. You know, and, and, and not, not to try to offend anybody, but I really don't see how you can put a brake pad on backwards. I think probably not paying attention, yakking or something like that. You know, it has to be. That goes back to that a couple of weeks ago. Too worried about being on the phone while you're doing something or paying attention or something mm -hmm. like that. The clips is always the most aggravating things to me on brakes yeah. is getting them stupid clips on. But well. And there again, you got them, um, most of them's got the little silver backing plates on them. Mm -hmm. I've seen people not put those on. I mean, I've, I've seen them open the box and throw them away, never even give them a chance. And it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, those are there for a reason, which I was bad about. They make a spray that you can spray on them to help keep the noise down. Uh, and then I was always bad about putting on the back side of the pad itself, you can put a little brake lube mm -hmm. on there and it'll it'll keep it from being noisy. Um, you have to be careful with that because when you, when you put it on the back and you go to put it in, if you're not real careful, you get it all over your hands. Next thing you know, you're touching the front of the pad and we know that's not good, yeah. but um, done right, you could take noisy pads mm -hmm. and, and cut them down. Uh, one thing that I haven't seen in a while, the quick oil change places used to work you, you know they would do that in lifetime brake pad yeah. changes or whatever yeah. uh, those didn't last very long around here they mm -hmm. they pretty much all took their signs down and i don't know if it was misconception because ever because i had people call me that said so they warned them for the lifetime i'm like that doesn't mean you'll never have to do brakes again you know that means if they wear prematurely before mm -hmm. the pad you know before it should and everything else is good, then they'll cover the brake pad. But a lot of people thought that that meant they'd never have to do brakes again. Well, I did a, not there. I did a brake job this week. I think it was Tuesday, Monday, uh, for a mailman. There's a rural mail route. Yeah. <clears throat> he's got a big route. And he's like, man, I just put these things on in April, into April. He said, I went to AutoZone. I told them I wanted the longest lasting brakes they had, and they sold me a lifetime brake pad. See, that's that misconception. That man, I, it was like, there was literally nothing left yeah. of that, so. Well, and that's what I would try to explain to the people that would call me on it, um, because they'd say, hey, you know, if I go buy the pads, will you, you put them on their lifetime, it's like, they're, they're not lifetime. Uh, and there's always that argument that you would have with them, because they're like, yeah, that's what it says. It's like, yeah, no, and, and, and almost always, 
and I don't mean this in a bad way, but almost always they say something like that, lifetime this, lifetime that. There's always a catch. It's always that fine print. There's always that catch to where something else, if 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 your slide pins, which I always you I always every time you do a brake job you need to, to mm -hmm. grease the brake pins, which I always recommend taking the old off in case it's got any dirt or grit, but clean that off and, and do that, but they always want to point to something there, you know, oh well this is why it did it. Yeah. Um, which we have we have some really good alignment shops around here, but I, I've heard in the past and places that I've worked in the past, you know, it seemed like every time they did an alignment and you left and you come back and it still wasn't right, oh, well, that's because this was wore out. It's like, well, you didn't tell me that that was wore out before, right. you know, and we would catch a lot of that at, at Toyota because they, they would go somewhere, you know, this is the cheapest place to get the, the alignment done. And next thing you know, it wasn't right, so they were telling him, well, you need struts and mm -hmm. you need control arms. Control arms and struts was one of the two most recommended things at an alignment shop, which I know for a fact that those do go bad, and I know that they do need replaced, but sometimes that wasn't the issue. It was yeah. just, you know, you, it wasn't adjusted. But it's, it's not real hard to tell when a strut's bad. It's not real hard to tell when bushings are bad, which... It seems like the number one thing to do when control arms are bad is just replace the whole thing. You know, uh, it's got easier to do that than it is to put bushings in some of them. So, mm -hmm. but, and I know, as far as ball joints and stuff like that, people hate doing those. So if they can get a control arm with a ball, uh, yeah, just stick ball them joint, in there. Yeah, they just stick them in there. Yeah. So, it seems like uh, as we progress in the mechanic world, it don't matter how much extra it costs. If it's easier, that's what we're recommending. So. Mm -hmm kind of hate to see that because there is a lot of there I mean there is a lot of cheaper ways to do well I did a starter this week too and <clears throat> the the brushes was wore out my starter is all it was yeah and um it was seven dollars and some change for the brushes and a new starter was a hundred and forty nine dollars and because it's John Deere you know yeah it wasn't even a new it was a reman and I was like hmm so I put brushes in it you know Talk about a dying art. That right there is what, here in Bloomville, we used to have somebody to rebuild uh, alternators, starters. Mm -hmm. There, As far as I know, there's nobody else around doing that. But not only that, uh, that doesn't get recommended in any shops around here anymore that I know of. Well, if, I, if they do, it's few <clears> and far between. You know, in the tractor, tractor world, I believe it's a little more common than in, in the yeah. car world because just the availability of the parts, you know. Well, it's like if you've got an international or a case, you know, the closest dealer, you don't have to go all the way to Bahia. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of that's the reason why I know how to do it. I, I'll right. just put it that way, you know. Well, and I, I've actually did it in regular <clears throat> starters. Um, the first one I did, I just strictly told the customer, "Look, I don't know that this will work. I've never done it." but they needed a, a really cheap option. Uh, they had went to a junkyard and bought a starter and it was no good. So some junkyards uh, actually allow returns. This one would not, you know, it was kind of, you take this risk, it's an electrical part, it's either gonna work or it's not. It didn't, so they were already upside down on more money than they had to spend. So right. we actually ended up putting brushes in it, which we did have to wait on the brushes for a little while, but when they are not, you know, when they finally did come in, we were able to put them in, and it was all good. So I, I wouldn't say I'd rebuild every one of them because some of them probably, you know, if you're waiting six months on parts to replace yeah. it, which I've always found it interesting when they've rebuilt alternators too. That's something that I'd like to, to get mm -hmm. into just to try once, just do it once. Okay, now I've done it. I'm trying to look up these. I know we've showed these. Um, We've had a couple complaints on them, and and I was going to talk about some of the some of the issue that I've heard because I've seen I've seen it. You know, I know we always talk about the good stuff of everything, but I sell a bunch of them, and mainly for the reason of what we can do. It we can normally replace them real quick when we got them. It's just simply here you go, but they are hard to get. When we talked to them at Expo, the number one complaint we were hearing back from customers is that the pen right up front here this little bitty pin would break and then of course it would leave it right. to where it wouldn't hold and from what he told us is there's an actual pin available to fix it 
I was going to give that part number out, but my computer's wanting to be stupid. But that makes it, I know if if it does happen to break and you can get a pin warrantied real quick, just mm -hmm. because all that does is just push it in and with a clip on the back side, then that issue's no more, right? right? Now, if it's breaking on every one, then yeah. But where I, from where I've seen, normally when they break, it's because it, it's one of the big filters that even with those big long, long ones that we have, you know, it takes all that torque. So right. they didn't want to do it too, too hard. Uh, I forgot the reason he told me that they didn't want to do it too hard, but um, they did want it to have a little bit of, um, a little bit more strength. So they did strengthen the pin. Since I've got these in, out of all of them, none is broke. Cool. So I don't, I don't think that's the issue no more. Um, but they did make the pin available because that's the number for for these people here. The number one complaint was, mm -hmm. well, that pin, you know. So when I heard a bunch of that, I did warranty three out of, of the first set that I, the first series that I sold. Every one of them was the pin, and at the time we just handed them a new set. Yeah. Which I mean, if if there's not a pin available, that's still going to be the option. Here you go. Mm -hmm. But so if, if you if you heard that and you had any fears of that, it should be. It should be rectified now. There should be options cool. to get you back going. And if you're if you've got some of the originals and you're still waiting on your dealer to get the new ones in, tell him to look for the pen. Maybe he can just fix those and and get it going. So there you go. I don't I don't really remember any more complaints on anything uh, as far as top of my head. That but um, I know toolboxes. If you're waiting on toolboxes. Uh, We've had long wait times this year. I think everybody's had long wait times yeah. this year. But uh, they're actually currently, they just, uh, dis they're upgrading our plant to try to handle the, the need of that. So they're putting in upgraded equipment to try to help speed up the process. It says it will greatly improve uh, our wait time. So they, hopefully when they get that done in a week or two, our cool. toolbox will start being made quicker. So. That's a good thing. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, thank y'all for hanging out with us on this awesome Saturday morning. Like always, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes down in the description. If you're not subscribed, take your finger and click that button. Have a great weekend. See ya.